Hello, my name is Tracy Elbert and uh, I'm going to go over the care, feeding and types of electrical gloves today. I've had a lot of inquiries from members of the Geek Group which uh, produces some pretty high voltage Tesla coils and stuff and really this is an attempt to keep everybody safe and uh, happy. I don't want to see anybody get killed out there with an inferior product or buying something used that doesn't work properly. So first we're going to cover the classes of electric gloves and the first class is called class zero or what Lyman would call disc gloves they're used commonly by people that read meters or work on live electrical equipment that is less than a thousand volts um, they're typically tested at five thousand volts and they're rated working rated at a thousand volts next class of gloves is called a class one glove and is generally tested at 10,000 volts and is used up to 7,500 volts. The third class is class 2 gloves, which we'll get into a little bit more in a minute. These are tested at 20,000 volts and rated for use at 17,000 volts. Now there's another class of gloves called the class 3 glove. It's tested at 30,000 volts and rated for 26,500 volts. If you violate the class of gloves you're using, you can die. Now these are very good gloves if you're working on a 240, 480, 110 volt live circuit and you just want to avoid a shock. They are very, very, very useless for working on high voltage equipment at all. Now we'll get into the class 2 glove. On all of these safety gloves have what they call an inner rubber glove which protects you from the high voltage and then a leather over glove which is designed to protect the glove from getting holes, abrasions and such so if you're climbing a pole with your gloves on a splinter or something is not going to go through your rubber glove and compromise its electrical integrity and its insulation. Now keep in mind the one little pinhole in this inner glove in a bad contact situation will fry your finger like a hot dog at the very minimum and will kill you at the very worst. Now if you happen to buy a pair of gloves used on eBay or something along that way you're going to want to do a standard field test on the glove at the very minimum because you're not going to be able to have the right kind of high voltage equipment to test your glove. So here's how you properly test a glove for pinholes and such as your finger curl up a very 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 tight seal on the top of the glove just as tight as you can get it wrap it tight and you roll it down so it blows the glove up like a balloon and you hold it like that for about a minute or two now, if this glove goes flat at all it's junk complete junk there's a pinhole in it somewhere or something along the way you should cut off a couple of fingers and completely discard the glove now a pair of these gloves new, typically from the class 0 up to the class 3, the gloves themselves will cost you from about $57 a pair for the inner protect rubber gloves to $221 depending on the class. The outer protective gloves will cost you somewhere between $31 and $35. Remember test your gloves every time you use them if you, if you store them away somewhere and you just want to grab them for a quick test on a Tesla coil or something along those lines. Test them every time. If you're using them every day, probably test them every two days. Now the other proper thing, important thing to remember is the proper storage of your gloves. Now once you're done using your gloves at the end of the day and you rinse all the sweat and stuff out of them because you've been climbing poles all day long in 104 degree index heat index I rinse mine out with water and dump it out and hang them up vertically to dry one way or another but once they're dried out again if you want to be able to get them on and off easy a light dusting of baby powder inside the gloves will help them slip on and off and you properly store your gloves in a glove bag for future use. Avoid, always avoid any harsh solvents like acetone, xylene or anything of the like on your gloves. 
Also, storing them in sunlight, particularly the inner rubber gloves, will seriously degrade the rubber and ruin your insulation. And thirdly, you don't want to have them balled up like this in the trunk of your car for months at a time because all of the creases and stuff that you put into that rubber will, will degrade the rubber and reduce the insulation class. Now, if I was to buy a pair of gloves for doing Tesla coil, I would just go for the Type 3. But the problem is, with each glove type, with each glove class I should say, the insulation gets heavier and heavier and heavier so they become harder and harder to work with. So that's why I generally like my class 2 gloves if I can use them. I don't own a pair of class 3 gloves. If I need to use a pair, hopefully my employer can provide them. But let's all play safe out there. Uh, the life you save may be your own. And uh, this will conclude this little short training video on how to properly use, test, and maintain your personal protective equipment. I, your lineman gloves or your electrician's gloves. Thank you and have a very good day.